Our research we are presenting today is on the effect of zebra mussels on water quality of Minnesota lakes. The contributing authors to this research are Ashley Adams, Noah Anderson, Jaden Conroy, Taylor Devine, and Raquel Eggie. Presenting today is myself, Ashley Adams, Jaden Conroy, and Taylor Devine. First off, we have a picture of the poster that we created in regards to the research. Next, the background. Zebra mussels are an invasive, small, fingernail sized species known for the striped pattern on its shell. Although native to the fresh waters of Eurasia, over time, zebra mussels have found their way into the Great Lakes region of the United States and have since continued to spread across the region, invading many lakes in the close proximity, particularly the Minnesota Lakes area. Researchers have found that zebra mussels negatively impact ecosystems in many ways. Because of the detrimental effects of zebra mussels have to lake ecosystems, this study will seek to compare the quality of lakes that vary on their level of zebra mussels in order to understand the overall impact that zebra mussels have on ecosystems. With a majority of our researchers having connections with the lakes area, we thought studying the effects of zebra mussels on water quality in Minnesota lakes would not only be interesting, but relative to our lives. Our null hypothesis is the presence of zebra mussels will have no effect on water quality and water conductivity of sampled lakes. Our alternative hypothesis is the presence of zebra mussels will cause a change in the water clarity and water conductivity of sampled lakes. The first method is water conductivity. To measure water conductivity, a water conductivity meter is needed. To do this, you simply put the probe in the water and record the data that the meter provides. And lakes with a lower conductivity reading suggest that the water is dirtier, and lakes with a higher reading suggest the water is cleaner. On the graphs listed here, and that will be discussed later, the x-axis represents the six lakes that we sampled. So first we have the two lakes that do not have zebra mussels, which acted as our control group in this research, which is Turtle and Little Cormorant. Then the next two lakes have had zebra mussels for two years, Middle Cormorant and Upper Cormorant. And the final two lakes like Ida and Upper Cormorant have had zebra mussel presence for more than five years. So to begin our discussion of the water conductivity data, this figure shows all of the um, measurements that we collected and the observed trend that you can clearly see appears to support the alternative hypothesis that there is a change in the readings between lakes with and without zebra mussels. And luckily this observation is further backed up with the statistical analysis we conducted between the two control lakes, Turtle and Little, compared to the lakes with the five-year zebra mussel presence, Ida and Big Cormorant. The p-value was 0 0.000698, which supports the alternative hypothesis and offers the idea that zebra mussels had, have indeed had an effect on conductivity specifically decreasing the conductivity rates. However, the comparison of the control lakes with the two-year muscle presence, upper and middle, did not return a statistically significant p-value as it was 0 0.987, which supports the null hypothesis. This analysis supports the idea that possibly two years was not long enough to observe a noticeable difference, but obviously further research would need to be done. Our second method of analyzing water clarity um, of lakes was water clarity. To measure this, a secchi disc or turbidity, turbidity tube is needed. To use the tool, the tube is filled up with water and the water is slowly released from an opening at the bottom. As soon as the screw at the bottom is visible, the opening is quickly closed and the water left is measured. The more water left in the tube suggests the lake has higher water clarity well, when there's less water in the tube, it suggests there is lower water clarity. Here we have two graphs representing the water clarity of the sampled lakes. So the figure shown on the top left um, has green bars and blue bars, and the green bars on the graph represent the water clarity measurements that exceed the 1.2 meter range that our equipment was able to measure. So this data could not be used for analysis. Um, the data collected, though it looks like it would be significant, turns out to be statistically insignificant as the p-values returned were 0 0.899 and 0 0.965 respectively. 
Though we do think if our sample size was different, possibly not limited to just three lakes, or if we did not have equipment limitations, that this would definitely be a great indicator of zebra mussel effects on water quality and would be interesting to do further research to discover the time frame that zebra mussels impacts can be readily seen. Additionally, shown in the top right is research supported by the Department of Natural Resources here in Minnesota that showed their water clarity readings and that they have conducted with sufficient equipment. The results display a significant difference in the water conductivity measurements in each lake, offering the idea that there are less suspended particles present in the lake and also revealing that in just a short span of five years, these lakes are already experiencing the negative impacts that zebra mussels can have on lake e ecosystem quality. Um, supporting data can be found through the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources as discussed earlier in our presentation. So though we were, um, so though there were some limitations with the experiment, the impact of zebra mussels on water quality was still uncovered. As zebra mussels continue to spread across the Minnesota lake area, they become even harder to manage as not only are they spread easily, but they also have no natural predators to reduce their population size and continue to grow exponentially. Although highly researched, scientists are still unable to find a solution for these invasive mollusks and further research and funding continues to be necessary in hopes of saving the pristine lakes across the Great Lakes area, while also protecting the lake ecosystems of the world.